off. You're watching Space Flight Now, the Ares 1X test flight. Jim Halsell's here, Anyway, Chow's here, and um, we're going to talk, he, he's with ATK, uh, flew in the shuttle uh, five times. Uh, Including first time with me. And you guys together. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and was he commander or pilot? He was PLT. We were both first time flyers then, and oh, uh, he so was you were, PLT. So you shared rookie flight. So you yeah, bonded. Yeah. You bonded in space kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm I was hit. sitting right behind him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, that, that must have been a fun time. What, what mission was that? STS-65, yeah. 15 years ago. 65, where did you, where'd you guys go? <laughs> Uh, space lab mission, so uh, long space lab mission. It was at the time. I think we set a record for duration for the shuttle. We did fourteen or fifteen days? I forget right. exactly. And what was ultimately the longest is now seventeen. Is that right? Is in the uh, seventeen, 17 or eighteen? Like I think it's eighteen. Right in there. Yeah, yeah right yeah. in there. And, uh, you know, at the time we thought we were setting it record-making <laughs> history, but you compare it to what the station guys are doing nowadays, like <laughs> Leroy got to do it later, and it's yeah. kind of pales in significance. Did you ever want to do a station increment? You know, I did, but I think Leroy will vouch for this. The training scenario that they have to it's go through is just yeah. absolutely brutal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had the opportunity to fly the shuttle to the end of my career, but certainly a space flight's a space flight, and I would love to have had the opportunity well, to fly a station. I think almost every astronaut you talk to says, yeah, I'll go back. I just don't want to do the training. You know, just, you know, right yeah, now, training I'm, is... If I could just, you know, yeah. suit up for a <laughs> shuttle mission, I'm in, but training, right. you know... You'd probably do another shuttle mission if you had a chance. In right? a heartbeat. <laughs> <In> a heartbeat. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm headed out to uh, Ames to um, the NASA Advisory Council's meeting. I'm now a member of the NASA Advisory Council. He's in the club. Huh? He's, he's, I'm a special the, government uh, employee now. All the secrets so I, now. So I get to carry a badge, and you're going to show me where the aliens are, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then you're going to do the flashy thing on me, so I won't remember. Isn't that how that works, right? You know, <laughs> that's one of those questions you, they teach you never to answer. Never answer, answer that question. Because somebody <laughs> out there is going to take you seriously no matter what you say. Jim right? also was quoted. Yeah, it's it's, uh, there, yeah, there are guys in Building 2 in Houston right now going, oh, God, I can't believe this. You know, We can't even control them anymore. That's right. Anyway, um, but Jessica's over there going, don't, don't answer that alien question. She's over there. She's like waving her finger. Anyway, so I'm going to be in uh, doing the Education and Outreach Committee. Oh, So uh, any advice you have. That, and that includes all of you out there for how NASA can get better, get its message out, uh, inspire kids. Uh, lay it well, on me. What, what do you think? Well, what I would lay on is we had a meeting. Uh, some industry folks had a meeting with uh, with the new administrator, Charlie Bolden, uh, just last yeah. week, and he is passionate about this. He and is? in fact, he said when he was called into the White House to to meet with President Obama to be asked to do this job, uh, the first things the president said was wasn't hey, I need you to go fix NASA, or I need you to go get Aries 1 flying, or I need you to go figure out right. what we're going to do in space. He said, I need you to go turn the agency into a source of inspiration for, Boy. for America's youth and for the future. Somebody say so, amen. And you know? yep. so that's what it should right. be all about right, right. now. Right. And, really uh, should. And I know if Leroy remembers this, but Charlie's been passionate about this forever. I don't know if you remember, when we were, first became astronauts, one of the things they did for us is to teach us how to make a speech. Right. And they brought in three or four astronauts. One guy did the dinner speech, one guy did the serious policy speech. Charlie Bolden was the example of how to do an inspirational, right. motivational, he's educational kind of right. speech. He is. So this is something he's passionate about also. So I think you're going to see the agency really paying a lot of attention to ideas that y'all might come up with. Well, you know, i got to tell you, high on my list of ideas, uh, just off the top, and I'm going to have dinner with uh, Charlie tonight. It's, but frankly, he's a rock star. He right. really is. He's as, he's as uh, much has much marquee value as any NASA administrator that's come yes. down the pipe. It's such a great, compelling story, and so good in front of a crowd and inspiring people. And uh, so I think I think they need to put him a little more front and center. And I know he's he's a little reluctant about that right now. Like, that, 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 I, I agree. I if think he's watching right now, that's what I'm going to tell you, Charlie. Yep. You need to get out there. We, we need to make you a rock star. <laughs> Don't you think? Yes, I agree. And, I agree. and when and he he's came the to right Huntsville, guy for that too. he is. When he came to Huntsville uh, just last week, I know he spent a whole half a day going to schools in the local area and, and was really charged up by that. Wow. And that's before he came to the uh, the big event that evening and uh, gave the speech. Well, it's Bob Bronson. You know, it's interesting. Um, he's the first NASA administrator, believe this or not, what is he, the 11th or 12th NASA administrator? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, he is the first one to go over and have a meeting with the Secretary of Education. Wow. Now, he, now first of all, I'm not singling out any individual here, <laughs> but why hasn't that happened heretofore? Right. Secondly, the fact that he did that, 
I think says a lot about where his yes. head is at, and that's a good thing for the agency. So, um, so I suspect he's going to uh, give me some marching orders. But um, now that I'm a special government employee, you better listen to me too. Matter of fact, now that I'm a special government employee, can I stop those darn helicopters from coming overhead when I'm on the Not air? Not a chance. Can I stop? There, there, there's the sound of freedom. <laughs> there. The sound of freedom. Yeah. All right, let's um, let's let's move on to uh, ATK and and uh, the the task at hand here. Why is this important to inspire the next generation? Well, I think that continuing forward and having a goal that's out there, uh, which beyond low Earth orbit, moving back to the moon, the thought that we can put there at the moon, the plan to, to move on to Mars, if you're a young person, that's the kind of life that you want to aspire to. That's, that's the kind of future that you want to be a part of. So I think being part of a country and a world that aspires to those kinds of goals, it's important. So as the generation that's currently in the position to be able to establish those goals, I think that's our, that's our responsibility. Why should we, why should we go back to the moon? Why, and why is that important? for getting you know, my kids who sadly didn't have the, the good fortune like all of us to grow up during the space race and get engaged like we did. Why is it important? You know, it, it's important and it's recognized as being important by President Obama as a source of inspiration for the, for, for the next generation. And if we don't have a country that has the opportunity uh, to give those chances, those choices, those opportunities to America's next generation, or they're going to go off in a different direction. So we need to hold forth the, these, uh, these aspirations. Uh, as an example of, you can set goals for tough things, and you can go do them. And you don't give up when it gets hard halfway through. You push through and you succeed. There's a future for our country and our world out there. We don't necessarily know exactly what it is yet, but it's, it's absolutely essential that we go find out what that future is. And if we stop now, we stop as a species, and that's not what we do. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I think you're right. I think that last point is a point that I don't think people really think about. If we stop, we're not going to start back up. Right. These are the kinds of things you don't, you know, you don't dust off the gantries and start over again. You, you, you lose momentum, and, and frankly, uh, it, it, we're at a critical time right now with the end of the shuttle program upon us, and, and lots of questions about whether this is a forerunner of things to come, or who knows what. Right, uh, and and that period of time while we're trying to figure this out is is, is a, a time where you could you could lose everything if you didn't do it right. Right, I mean we are becoming more and more a global community, and I think that's headed in the right direction. But I'm still an American, and America is still a country that I want to see be on the forefront of space exploration. Well, America should continue to be the leader in human space. Exactly life. right. Yeah. Do we really want? Frankly, let's be honest about it. Do we want the Chinese? Do we want India? Do you want? Do we want the Russians, do we want all of them to be ahead of us in space? Do we care about that? That's a very important question that Americans should ask themselves. And the answer is emphatically no. We want to do it with them as, the, as a leader. But we want to be a part of it. Right. right. And, and history to, yeah. is full of examples of where nations have shrunk back from their destiny and they've gone by the wayside as a result. And right. this nation can't do that. We, and, and I don't want to be the generation that turned us ever so gently in that direction. I want to continue to boldly go forward. Um, quickly, uh, we, we talked big picture. You feel strongly that we're going to go today? I I have learned that we will go when it's right. And as, oh. as a guy who's had the opportunity to be what, in charge of What, are you running for of, office here? No, no, yes no. or no? I, thumbs up or thumbs it's down? A, it's a thumbs up. Thumbs up, yeah. All right. Yeah, You've chastised yeah. me into a, an optimism <laughs> that my cynical nature usually prevents me from having. But, you know, we'll go when it's right. Today it looks like things might be working out right. Yesterday it was all about the weather, and today we're going to be watching the weather close. No, it wasn't closely. all about the weather. It was about that cargo ship captain who screwed yeah, everything up. Yeah. I don't know if I can wring his neck. Where is that guy? Let's have, anyway. let's have him Twitter yeah. in. Yeah. Let's find out who he but is. But it wasn't about the vehicle, and I think the vehicle's just waiting patiently for uh, us to get the right weather in place and in the right cleared range, and we'll go test this vehicle. Jim Halsell, shuttle veteran, buds from way back. Yeah. What's your crew handshake? Do you have a secret handshake? No, we, no, we don't. You can't do that, right? All right. You can't do that on TV, right? All right. Thanks for dropping by, and I'll, I'll tell the administrator you said hi, and you know you want to go back to the moon, and you'd like to go. I would. All yeah, would you do that? All right, I got you covered. All right, thanks, Jim. Right, just a phone call away from another place. All right, we'll see you. Back to NASA for a bit.